Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Duel with Jay Wade. Today, I got the Eco B4. I'm gonna go through the unboxing, the installation, and the basic setup. I will be doing a full review on this thermostat in the future once I've used it for a while. Welcome back if you've been to my channel before, and if it's your first time, welcome to you as well. I'll get right into it. Coming out of the box, you have the Eco V actual thermostat. If you roll it over onto the back, you can see that it just snaps on and it plugs in. This makes for easy installation. One of the biggest differences between the Eco B3 and the Eco B4 is that the Eco B4 comes with a built in Alexa. The model that I chose, and I believe all of them, come with a remote sensor. Now, this remote sensor does come in extremely handy because what the EcoB smart thermostat tries to do is keep your house at an equal medium in all of the rooms. Now this device works with your Amazon Echo, the Google Home, the Apple Home Kit, and you can also set it up with IFTTT. So this has a power extender kit for homes without a C-wire. So if you live in an older home, you can still install this into your older home. One of the best reasons to own this is that it's a hardwired thermostat. It requires no batteries to operate. Included with all the instructions, you do get an easy way to label the wire so that you don't get confused when you, get to, when you begin to wire it up. Now it does come with a white base plate. I changed mine out and purchased a black base plate because I knew it would add a little bit of contrast. One of the differences that I wasn't aware of was that this black back plate would be aluminum, whereas the white one is plastic. I don't believe it has any bearing on the performance of the product. Wiring is made simple because you don't have to turn the thermostat any kind of crazy way to get it installed this is this plate goes directly onto your wall and you plug the wires coming out of your wall into this the included bubble level make sure that everything is level on your wall so anybody can install it don't be scared at all you do get screws for your installation and this here is the power box that will be required if you did not have power running all the way up the wall to your thermostat. This product right here makes it 99.9% .9 compatible with all systems out there. So you won't even have to worry about buying it and it not being compatible. So now we'll move on and get into the installation. This here is my old thermostat sitting on the wall. There was nothing wrong with it. It was working just fine. However, I wanted to integrate it into my smart home. Installation starts pretty simple. I just pull the old thermostat off of the wall and inside you'll see all the wires. Now, one of the things that you wanna do before you start getting to work is ensure that you turn off the power running to your thermostat and your HVAC system. So I throw mine back on, run outside, shut it off and then get right back into it. So once you get started, you wanna reach back into your package and grab your labels so that you can label the wires before you disconnect them from your old system. If you don't do this, it's easy to become confused and you do risk damaging your system. Now all of the wires are colored. However, the color may not correspond with the letter. R may not mean red, just like Y may not mean yellow. I'll show you more about that as we get into it. Now this is probably the most difficult part of the installation if you have large hands, but if you have small hands, you really won't have to struggle to grab those wires. Now once you got them all connected, it's good to give them one more check to make sure that none of your labels are loose because if they fall off during the process, you may run into a problem. Once you get everything loose, you can head straight into loosening up the wires. Now you're gonna have to use some type of small screwdriver to get it loose, but it shouldn't be that difficult at all. Now most thermostats are held on with just two Phillips head screws. 
So once you loosen those, your box should be ready to come off. At this point, you want to be very gentle with taking the wires out. Now, if you have not loosened them all the way, take a little bit of time and give it another turn. So that way you don't damage any of the wires because you're going to have to replace those and put them back into the new thermostat. Now, after I got the old thermostat off the wall, I did do a test fit. But if you can see that big, large hole that was placed there when my original thermostat was installed, that's exactly where I needed a screw. So I had to use a nail bracket to create the point where I could put a screw in and hold my thermostat up. Now you more than likely will not have this problem. But because I did, I wanted to leave it in the video and show you what I did to overcome the problem to ensure that I could still mount my thermostat flush and fresh on my wall. Now that I have a place for my mount to go, I can easily do a test fit. And there is a small arrow to show you which one is up and which one is down because you can see that the holes sit in a little bit of different spot. So with my bracket, I'll be using the top portion for the screw to go through the metal bar and the bottom portion as a traditional mount to go directly into the drywall. So now it's time to get the back plate installed and I just grab all of the parts, hold them together, pull the wires through and make sure that I don't rip off any of my labels. Now I did go ahead and install the screws in the top and the bottom of the back bracket to ensure that I got it level using the included bubble level. And when I plug in my wires, I'll never have to move it again. Now the wiring was straightforward. I had no issues. I could find my labels. And what made this one easier than the one I took off was that it uses all push pins. So I didn't need a screwdriver. So all I did was slide them in the copper wire. They press straight through. I check and make sure that they're snug. And once I'm done, everything is complete. It was easy just to snap the thermostat back on. Sorry I didn't record that for you. But once you get it on and turn your power back on, the Eco begins to boot up. And these are the scenes that it goes through as it boots up. Now the booting process was extended. I did speed it up. It took just about three minutes to get started and get to the screen that I'm on right now. But it asked me as it opens up what wires I have connected and it asks for confirmation. And once it moves on, it works with a humidifier, dew humidifier, and a ventilator. It does all of that support for you. Now, if you've ever set up any electronic device, you'll be accustomed to all of the scenes that it goes through. So I'll speed through those but it just wants to connect to my Wi-Fi and also connect to my Amazon account so I can use it with Alexa. So one of the features that I set up inside of my thermostat is that I want it to be in auto mode. Now it tells me to select my cool setting and my warm setting. So that way, when it gets too cool, I can turn on the heat. When it gets too warm, I can turn on the AC. Now accessing all of the settings is easily done through the touch screen on the device or you can use your smartphone. Now what I'm going to do here is set up the additional room sensor through the settings inside of the device and by using the small room sensor. Now it does come pre-packaged with your standard CR2025 watch battery. Now programming it was extremely simple as well, and I'm very happy at how easy it is to actually install this Ecobee thermostat. I'm gonna be placing this small one in my bedroom, and if it works well, I'll definitely be picking some up in the future to put in some of my other rooms. Now my bedroom is upstairs, so it does tend to be a bit warmer. Well guys, the installation and initial setup is complete. We've gone over and putting it on the wall. 
we've looked at hooking it up to the Wi-Fi and turning on the remote sensor. Everything else will be covered in a future video. So subscribe if you have not already done so, so you don't miss the update. And give me a like if you enjoyed this video. And let me know down in the comments below if you own the Ecobee 3 or the Ecobee 4 and the best features that you enjoy about using your smart thermostat. Hey, I'm Jay Wade, and I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial. Peace.